Hello. On the uh, continuing subject of motors, generators, and electromagnetic effects in general, you probably know that if you move a magnet or a coil relative to each other, a magnet and a coil relative to each other, so the magnetic field through the coil changes, it produces a voltage. As you can see quite clearly on that. That's a little coil with a piece of steel in it and a magnet sat on the end of it. So as I move it, it's changing between the magnet being outside the coil and the magnet being inside the coil. But uh, there's another way of producing a similar effect without moving either the coil or the magnet. And that's called a reluctance sensor. Um, uh, you've probably seen these things all your life without even realising what they are. Although they're also used very widely in industry and in cars, for such as uh, and wheel position sensing and uh, crankshaft camshaft sensing. Most likely one you've seen is guitar pickups. These are reluctant sensors. You can see in that where the tape's not quite covering it. There's a coil there around the full size of the former. There are steel pins, or in some cases the screws, through. And there's little armatures, or not armatures exactly, but poles, magnetic pole pieces or whatever. Uh, though they're not actually the magnetic in themselves on this type. And then there's a slab of ferrite magnet on the back on these. Now the type of magnet varies from pickup to pickup. Some use these, some the well, there's all sorts of different types. The classic one of the classic ones is Nico magnets, I believe. But that is a reluctant sensor. No moving parts in this in this in the sensor. It senses movement of a ferrous item near it that deflects the magnetic field. And I can demonstrate it back with this little set again, hopefully. That's just a piece of uh, general steel. It's a, it's a clevis pin, bearing pin for something. It's not magnetic in itself. But if it's moved near that, I've got to hold this so it doesn't pop through because of the magnet. If I move it near that, without touching it, if I can keep it close without doing anything with it, it produces a voltage. Obviously the meter doesn't read very very well when I'm doing it fast, but you can see it quite clearly on the scope. It's producing a voltage output. And what it's doing is changing the shape of the magnetic field around the coil. Around the field from the magnet, just going kind of straight around to the iron and back again in a small area. When you put another piece of metal at this end, the field stretches. And uh, there's quite a nice illustration here in an RS data sheet of a sensor they sell, uh, an industrial type sensor, which is actually made by Transducer Systems Incorporated apparently. If the piece of steel is a, is a gap, or the ferrous material has a good gap from the sensor, then the magnetic field stays local to the sensor assembly. If the ferrous material becomes close enough then it changes the shape of the magnetic field it, so it effectively changes where the field lines go through the coil just the same as if you move the coil or the magnet. Now, I don't know if this is going to work because I've never tried it before. If I shift all these bits out of the way. This little coil by the way is, I don't know what the magnet is in, is the guts of, or part of the guts, of a, an automotive relay. I was looking for something I could, I could pull small coils from to experiment with and do demos, or build gadgets. These car relays are about one of the cheapest things you can find if you search around on such as eBay. Um, you can get packs of five even very, very cheaply. And if you hack them apart, that's what you get inside. Um, and that's, that did have that kind of riveted on the end there, and that was folded round. 
but that that bit there is basically that slice out the middle there with all the other bits removed and if you want to do that then start with a pair of side cutters right to, against the top corners and gradually work around and peel it apart so you, you stay well away from the coil and especially where the very very fine coil lies attached to the terminal pins there that come through to the tags anyway that's on the side so i go back to the magnet oh sorry this the the armature from this I suppose it is a bit of magnetic armature, isn't it? even though it's not a moving part. Um, it's part of the armature assembly. If we go back to that, and it was a bit bigger magnet just for stability. So that's a, a flat magnet. Um, some bits of plastic shim, and all plastic spacers, which are the ones that came with these magnets to hold them apart when they're supplied to make them easier to separate. Uh, I did find the right bits for the spacing because I knew that was going to be a pain. But as I say, I've not actually tried the whole experiment, so I've no idea what's going to happen yet. But two layers of those just happen to hold that up about right. It's an experiment. Right, now. Yeah. Ferrofluid. This is a suspension, a liquid suspension of incredibly fine ferrous or iron particles. So fine, basically, they stay floating. Not even much. I'm just going a bit, bit of that. We'll try. I don't, as I say, I don't know if it's going to work. You see, it's a, <laughs> ah, that's part of the thing. It's, it's all pulling towards a magnet. It's, <laughs> mm, okay. It's actually all being drawn to the magnet and just sitting on it. I tilt that down. Let it stay there. Because I want a bit. Ah, yeah. If I tilt it down a bit, that's working. So what I'm trying to do... I'm going to have to zoom right in to do this, if I can. Now I'm going to have to get closer. Let me take the phone out. Camera. If we get really close into this, if I go near this end now, with this non-magnetic object, it changes the magnetic field around the end of the rod. It's actually put the, you know, see it's actually pulling the stuff. And this is non-magnetic. If the coil was around the rod, that would be moving the magnetic field and changing the field lines through the coil. And that's what produces the voltage on a reluctant sensor or a guitar pickup, which is the same thing. I mean, properly made ones can be very, very sensitive and they have a lot more turns than this coil probably. But this is something that you can Try yourself if you get some ferrofluid. Well, you, you can try the voltage out and put yourself just with, with bits, salvaged parts that are readily available. And if you want to get some ferrofluid, you can try the actual visual experiments. It is interesting stuff, just be very careful. It's going to be very, very, very messy. And that's it, a non-magnetic item moving the magnetic field around a fixed magnet assembly. It could have the coil around it, but the coil was there, it would be lifted too high to see clearly. Right, I'm just going to pause for a second. Okay, so I've just uh, had a dig and brought this stuff out, which is a magnetic sensing film. I don't know if it'll work on this, but um, I don't know if the stuff's still any good. I don't know if it's got a limited life or whatever, because Last time I tried it, it didn't seem very sensitive, but I'll try it. This is supposed to show the field patterns. Right, so that's got rid of the plastic lid because I don't need that to contain liquids. So move that up that way a bit and hold it down. <coughs> I'm trying to uh, 
hold the camera and everything else at the same time. Ah oh yes, now you can see very clearly that there's a, a change in the magnetic field around the tip of that rod and the tip of the rod is also uh, showing magnetic effects because of the induced magnetism, same as it was attracting the ferrofluid when it was close to the magnet. It's like a, a piece of plain iron will attract uh, iron filings if there's a magnet near it enough to induce a magnetic effect. But yeah, that's another. Actually, I'll, uh, I might do a separate video on this effect because that's uh, quite visual. Anyway, okay, so I thought I got ended up a bit drawn out, but uh, I think it does demonstrate a few principles. Um, thanks for watching.